Hello and welcome to my first full-length do-it-yourself instructional video. Today I'll be showing you how to crimp Anderson connect power pole connectors and how to use them. Uh, the reason I recommend and I like using Anderson power pole connectors is that they are easy to connect and disconnect. I've got a, an example unit here. Um, so they can be reused quite easily, uh, especially if you're making modular parts that you're going to be using with multiple systems. But also one of their big advantage is that they can be keyed. Uh, so what that means is that, as you can see here, I've, I've attached two of them together. They're in the same orientation. If I were to attach these two uh, in any other way, I can make sure that you can't plug things that shouldn't go together together because now we have one that's been rotated 90 degrees and one of them that's that could fit. Um, you can also make offsets and so there's a lot of options with this. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be showing you is how to do this without an Anderson crimper. The reason being that they go for about $100 over here, and even if you buy them overseas and wait six to eight weeks to get them, they still cost you uh, more than all of the tools you see here, which are much more general tools that can be used in a lot of other projects. Uh, so what we've got here today uh, is just a pair of long nose pliers. Um, no reason I chose these. You could have used just about any pliers to do this. I've got my wire stripper. Uh, a nice little fancy one, but really anything will do. A uh, pocket knife, you don't actually need to have a proper uh, automatic stripper. And snips. Um, these go for almost nothing. Uh, on Amazon, they're an add-on item for about two or three bucks. I really recommend them to get a nice clean cut on uh, the metal. And a butane torch. Uh, the butane soldering torch is important because if you don't heat uh, the metal sufficiently as you're trying to, to, so to solder, you're going to end up with uh, beating metal and you're going to deform the piece so that it won't fit into the casing anymore. And also you're going to have a weak joint that can crack, which will defeat the purpose of soldering in the first place. So the first step is to strip about a centimeter or just around half an inch of the sheathing off of the wiring. I'm using a 14 gauge multi-strand wiring. You're gonna give it a little twist. This is gonna be too short, just so that it doesn't fray when you put it in the casing. I'm gonna make it bottom out. Now, as you can see, it bottoms out but the plastic actually touches the sheathing. We don't want that. We want about an eighth of an inch sticking out, so about three millimeters sticking out. I'm gonna overdo it on purpose here. Show the opposite. Now if we put this in, as you can see, the problem here is that once you have the casing on, you could still have a short, so you don't want that. So this is where the snips are useful. Trim it down. Give it a twist. And this is about what we want. You can see that the wire is uh, bottoming out in the connect in the in the metal connector, but there's only a little bit sticking out in the back here. Now the crimping part. The part that is actually not that hard. I've only, in the beginning when I was trying to figure out, wasted, I think, two of these, and I've gone through over 50 or 60 of them by now. Um, but really, with these instructions, you shouldn't have the issue I had. So there's actually, a, you can't really see it, but there's a little crack in the, in the middle of this at the top. So you'll want to be pressing on only one side. You want to be pressing on only one side here. And... Crimp it up and down. Now you've got your first half done. The second step is to kind of bring it back together because 
as we're doing this without the proper tool, it does flare out a little bit and that can actually prevent it from going into the casing later on. So we're just gonna bring it back in a bit. And then you'll want to press the second wing onto the first one. This is actually tight enough to do quite a bit, um, but you're always better making sure it's properly secured. Now, when we're gonna do this, Again, we'll, we'll be using the butane so that it gets hot enough. And really, if it's hot enough, as we're touching the top with, this, with the, the tin, it should travel on its own in the threading and at the tip. Touch the tip here a bit if we want. Once it's cool, well, cool is once it's warm to the touch. So once it's no longer boiling hot, you can put on the, the plastic sheathing. I'm just blowing on it here so that it cools down a bit faster. Um, I can tell by touching the wiring that it is cooling down rapidly already. I can touch this so it's not going to move as I try to set it in. Just push it in, it'll click in place, and that's it. You now have an inexpensive way of preparing your Anderson power poles.